Welcome to Golden Software Surfer Demo. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surfer mapping software package. This demo will give you a quick overview of some of the most exciting new features found in the latest version of Surfer. Let's get started. Surfer can now create multiple maps from different files at the same time. For example, create a map using Home, New Map, Contour, and select multiple grids to create multiple maps by holding down Control or Shift on your keyboard. The maps are created in the center of the plot, and each contour layer has its own map object. We can overlay these maps so they are spatially tied to one another by selecting the maps in the contents window and holding select. Click map tools, map tools, overlay maps. The grids are now aligned according to their coordinates. I can make changes to one map layer And then I can copy these properties by clicking Home, Clipboard, Copy Format, and paste them onto another layer by clicking Home, Clipboard, Paste Format. Add multiple layers to your map by selecting the map object and clicking Home, Add to Map, Layer. Again, use Shift or Control to select multiple objects and click Open. The base layers are added to our original map object. You can select multiple layers using Shift or Control and toggle their visibility on and off. Select multiple layers and move them to change their drawing order. Press Delete on your keyboard to remove multiple layers or even use Home Clipboard Duplicate to duplicate multiple layers. In the latest version of Surfer, you no longer need to click Start Editing to edit objects in a base map layer. When a base map layer is selected, a red arrow appears next to the layer name, and when expanded, each object in the base layer is italicized to indicate this layer is in editing mode. When a base layer is in editing mode, I can select one or more polygons. And then I can use all of the applicable features on the Features tab, such as Change Type, or the new Features buttons that pertain to polygons, such as Buffer, Union of Polygons, Difference of Polygons. Additionally, I can draw vector objects into my map from the Insert section. For example, a rounded rectangle. And the rounded rectangle is added directly into my base layer. If I click the coordinates tab in the properties window, you'll see the X and Y coordinates are all in lat long, which is the coordinate system my map object is using. All closed objects, such as this rounded rectangle, are now considered polygons. These objects can now be used in operations that were previously reserved for polygons only, such as grids, edit, assign no data, calculate volume. On the Map Tools tab, I could query objects or open the attribute table and perform attribute table operations. Base symbology schemes can now be saved and applied to future projects. For example, if you select a base layer and click the General tab in the Properties window, click the Edit Symbology button to open the Base Symbology dialog. Click Unique Values and change the attribute field to your desired attribute, and click Add All Values to the list. Make changes to the symbols, such as the symbol set, color, size, or fill, or line, by selecting and changing the properties on the right side. Once you're satisfied with the changes you've made, you can save this information by clicking the Save Values button. This creates a Symbology Unique Values file, or an SSUV. 
Once you've saved that file, you can apply it to any other project that uses the same attribute values. By returning to this symbology dialog, clicking unique values, changing the attribute field to the matching attribute field, and clicking load values. Click OK to apply the changes. You can quickly add a legend by clicking Map Tools, Add to Map, Legend. And just like that, we've created a professional map. Our next example will take a look at cropping an image and changing a color in the image to transparent. Currently, we're looking at a TIFF that has been imported as a base map. And we are going to crop off everything besides our map of interest here. And I'll go ahead and do this by selecting the base layer and then clicking Features, Image, Crop. Click and drag the handlebars down to remove the unwanted portions. And when finished, press Enter on the keyboard. The image has been cropped, and we now have extra white space in our map object. We can fix this by selecting the map object in the contents and clicking the Limits tab in the Properties window. We'll check Use Data Limits. Next, I'm going to choose a color in my image to make transparent. I'll do this by selecting my image. And on the General tab in the Properties window, I'll set the transparent color by checking Box. Choose a color to make transparent from the dropdown, or click Custom Colors. Use the Select tool to choose a color directly from your image. The tolerance controls how much the colors become transparent. You can slide it or enter a value. And we'll notice here that the entire ocean is gone, but the blues and purples that were in the actual map that I wanted remain. Now that I have cropped my image and made the ocean transparent, I'm going to add a contour map. So I'll select my map object and click Home, Add to Map, Layer, Contour. I'll remove the fill so we can see our image. We can see the contours are nicely overlaid. The next thing I need to do is create some profiles from a file provided by my client. Surfer can now create a profile from any polyline. No more digitizing necessary. I'll add my polyline file by selecting the map, clicking Home, Add to Map, Layer, Base. Select my DXF and click Open. And now I can easily create a profile from each of these lines by simply select the polyline and clicking Map Tools, Add to Map, Profile. Profile is added below the map. And we can give this profile a better name. I'll create my next profile by selecting my other polyline and clicking Map Tools, Add to Map, Profile. It's never been easier to create a profile in Surfer. The next new feature we'll talk about are changes we've made to the scale bar. Previously in Surfer, if you wanted to show your scale bar in a unit other than the unit your map is in, it required a little bit of math. We're happy to report that that is no longer necessary. So let's go ahead and add a scale by selecting our map and clicking Map Tools Add to Map Scale. My map is in UTM, so this scale bar is in meters. I'd like two scale bars, and I want my other scale bar to be in feet. So I'll select my map again and click Scale to add a second scale bar. 
With the scale bar selected, I'll click the Labels tab in the Properties window and change my scale bar units to feet. This does make our labels look a little bit messy, but we can easily fix that by adjusting our label formats in the Property Manager. Change the type to fixed and the decimal digits to zero. And of course, we will give our scale a title. Our last example today, we'll take a look at the 3D view. We can view our current map in the 3D view because we have this grid file overlaid on our picture. I'll select map and I'll click map tools, add to map. 3D view. The 3D view opens with a top-down view of our map. We can see the contours are still on here and our image is still overlaid just as it was in the 2D plot window. You can click and tilt the model for a different angle. One new feature we've added is the ability to reset the vertical exaggeration. I can change the vertical exaggeration by selecting environment in the contents window and on the general tab in the properties window. I can use the slider to increase our vertical exaggeration or I can click reset to put it back down to its default level. And lastly, we can directly export an image from our 3D view. After we make all of the necessary changes, so our, our image looks as we desire when exporting it, click 3D View Tools Export Image. Choose the image type and click Save. Make any desired changes in the export options and click OK. Our image has been exported. And we can take a look, and it looks just like it did in the 3D view. This concludes our demo for Surfer. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like more details about the newest features in Surfer, please give our webinar Increase Efficiency with Surfer's latest features, or reach out to our support team at support at goldensoftware.com. Thanks for watching.